Hey everybody, it's Michael from Bay Area Hiking. Guys, give me that information, give me that knowledge so you can hike with confidence. And I'm going to talk about ticks and Lyme disease and all that uh, good stuff that a lot of people kind of worry about quite a bit. Alright guys, well if you're new to the channel, don't forget like and uh, subscribe. Hit that bell if you can for notifications. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about the ticks for you. Stay tuned. Okay. Hey everybody, so let's start talking about ticks, Lyme disease, and all the other stuff that comes along with it. And there's some history, history there, but there's also a lot of anxiety that people develop with ticks in general that we want to go ahead and start clearing up for you. So, is it something that you need to be cautious about? Absolutely. Will you encounter them? Most likely. It, it's very possible, but there's a lot of things that you can do to kind of avoid being in contact with ticks in general. So just like the mountain lion video I did, I think the media kind of amplifies it a bit. So people have all these fears and worries and everything and they just kind of go nuts. So it's something that you definitely do need to be cautious about. But like I said, it's nothing to be really worried about as much as, as the media puts it out. It can get a little over exaggerated things. So ticks have several different stages. They got the larva, the nymph, the male, and the female, the adult stages. A lot of things in the wild but definitely ticks is something that I've had to encounter a few times. Have I ever had one? Yes, multiple times. I've, I've had to take them out in the field. I've had to take them out at home. All kinds of good things. So um, some people don't get them often as others. Now one thing that I like to do is I like to kind of wear clothes where I have pants on all the time. I have long sleeves if possible. I do tend to go out in a lot of brushy areas trying to take photography so I'm going to have a higher chance of interacting with the tick in general. Now ticks like to hang out on that high brushy grass or grass in general and they kind of just hang and they, they wait for something to pass by when they get that air and then they jump on, clamp on and it's game on and they'll start working their way into finding where your skin is, make contact, and start sucking away. Um, I know it sounds disgusting, but that's pretty much how it works. They start sucking on and they'll kind of put out a lubrication, kind of like a, a spit liquid almost, to help it so you're not going to feel what they're doing in any means necessary. It's almost like a, a numbness, kind of, but you're not really getting numbed. It's just... It's a, it's a way to make it easier for them to continue to take your blood without you really feeling it. So sometimes when they bite and they clamp on, you're not really going to feel it at all. Uh, you won't feel nothing. You'll be like, hey, what's going on? And then all of a sudden you might start itching or you might feel a little bit of pain on like the side. I always get them on the sides all the time, like right here. Um, but it happens. So one thing that I like to do with them in general is I like to make sure that my pants are I've got pants on. I don't like wearing shorts in general. It's not something I like to do. I don't wear a skirt, obviously, unless I'm, you know, into that kind of thing. That's cool. So I don't typically wear anything other than pants. I've got my repellent water pants that I always wear all the time. I love these guys. Um, but if you wear skirts or you like to wear shorts, people like to wear shorts all the time, um, you know, to let out the air. A lot of those trail runners wear them. And that's cool, but it's just you're more prone to getting them. So with my gear and what I've got on my shoes here, I have my gaiters on. I usually use those to help with the snow and the mud and all that other good stuff. Um, but I'm going to go through and, and pull these down a little bit. And I'll unzip them and kind of show you what I'm doing. Now they will help with ticks as well. They'll kind of help keep them off a little bit. Um, but they're mainly for mud and snow, so that's why I wear them. But you see how I've got my socks all tied up? And they come up and they tuck all the way up. And that helps um, prevent them from getting to skin contact. And that's what I'm doing. I've got my thermals down below. Um, and then boom, I, I tuck them in just like that. And I'm, I'm game on. So when they come up, they're not going to have anywhere to clamp on. So I'm doing the same with my shirt and my pants. But this is going to help keep everything from them, from them getting to where they need to be, okay? You can also do, and there's people that do this if you don't have thermals on because it's warmer out. And what they'll do is, is they'll, they'll take their pants and they'll fold them over and they'll tuck them like that. You can do that as well. That, that'll help. It might look a little cheesy, but hey, you're doing, a, you're doing a good thing. You're preventing them from getting you. So not a, not a bad idea. Um, and that's, that's how that really comes into play there. 
little things that you can do, the stuff you already have. You got your socks and your pants. Um, so you can see that if you're wearing shorts or you're wearing stuff that's not really, you know, that's very welcoming to them. Like if you got shorts on or you've got a skirt on, you're, you're going to be welcoming those ticks um, because all that skin is exposed. So uh, they tend to like to go to the warmer areas, usually the armpits or the groin. Um, that does, does tend to happen because it, it's producing a lot more of that warmth and they're kind of attracted to it. So always a good thing and a precaution to take on is when you go back home to take a shower um, and just check everything. Check your whole body, check, examine to make sure that you don't see them anywhere because they can clamp on like I said and you won't even feel it. Once, what I do is I'll tend to keep, tuck in my long sleeve shirt and I'll tuck it into my pants real nice and nice and handy. And I tuck that in and then I'll sometimes wear long sleeve shirts. Uh, even in the summer, I've got a more lighter weight long sleeve shirt, so it's more breathable. I'll tend to do that. I'm always in the brush all the time, but then I'll also tend to have my my um, or, or my um, my pants on, and then I'll put my socks over my pants. Some people will do that, or I'll put it over my thermals if you want to do that. It's always a good thing to do. Or raise my socks all the way up as high as I can possibly go. I wear longer socks, so that definitely helps a little bit. But, you know, still could happen. So let's talk about the tick in general once it's in, impacted. At least one to two days, 24 hours, of the tick actually being inside and clinged onto your skin. And to start actually having a, a case of getting... Uh, Lyme disease. So Connecticut's where the first case in the U.S. was recorded, old Lyme, and then the first case in California was in 1978. Now it's basically the same in the condition in Europe um, for the past hundred years ago. Lyme disease in this area is not easy to get. It's about a one to two percent chance of you actually getting it. And like I said, when it's inside and bitten and starting to take that blood flow in, it's about uh, it's at least one to two days in order for you to actually start receiving the um, Lyme disease. Okay, one to two percent is a pretty small percentage. Now, I'm also going to show tell you about another little case, and this is uh, an actual fact. Um, so the other fact about Lyme disease is there's a little buddy. So if you start seeing these guys around the western fence lizards, little small little lizards, they're a little smaller than your alligator lizard, little guys, you see those guys, praise them and honor them with much respect as possible because the western fence lizards are your buddies. They're here for a reason. And what they actually do is when these small tick bites onto these guys, and you can actually see ticks on them all the time, that blood flow transfer from what they're receiving from the western um, fence lizard is actually going to dissipate. So it'll kill that bacteria instantly. Okay. So I'm going to read this little uh, pamphlet that we have. And they discuss the western fence lizards. And what really will help you bring down that anxiety. Um, really cool important facts here. So. So what, what accounts for the low infection rate of local ticks? So what's, what's making the infection rate low? And this is one of those big players. Sometimes you can find a western fence lizard with dozens of ticks crowded around its head. The western fence lizards, and I'll leave a picture here. Um, the western fence lizards have a substance in their blood that when transferred to the ticks that feed on them kills the Lyme disease bacteria inside the ticks. Since many western black-legged ticks, nymphs, feed on western fence lizards, the adult ticks that grow from these nymphs are no longer infected with Lyme disease bacteria. In the eastern U.S., nymphal deer ticks, another oxidus, if I'm saying that correctly, feed on white-footed mice which can support an infection and pass it on. This accounts for which higher adult tick infection rates in the eastern U.S. So these lizards basically kill off the bacteria. Pretty cool. And they pretty much start off these lizards. And these lizards are basically taking that bacteria and boop, out it goes. So hats off to them. I'm going to buy them a beer. 
<laughs> it's really a lot of stuff and interesting stuff that we that the media doesn't really put out there. Oh my god, you know, everybody's all freaked out about. It. Now it's something you need to take cautions of. But there's stuff out there that it is created that nature has to to help bring down that anxiety. Um, it's just some really cool in, in that the adult ticks you're less likely to have them on you. The cases are so small to have the adult ticks on you. But it's the, really the, the rats and the mice and all that good stuff that, you know, that some of us brought here. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> no. But it's, it's the mice and the rats that are really the ones that are carrying all that bacteria that aren't good. But once they go to these lizards, it's kind of like they start jumping on them at an earlier stage and help just kind of get that bacteria, boom, whammo, pajamo. And also the other thing is, okay, they're on you, but a day or two before you, you really start having a chick case. So when you pull them out, if you run into the situation where you need to pull out the tick, I have a medical pack that I've talked to you guys about the medical packs, and this really helps working that out, okay? Don't grab them with your fingers because then you're gonna, just, you're gonna bust it and it's gonna go on your finger, it ain't gonna be good. So you don't wanna have that going on. So my little medical pack, and this is the first aid kit I got from RAIC, uh, three, three day -er. And this has got um, the tweezers. I don't think the smaller packs have them, but um, this guy does. And what I'll do is I'll take these little tweezers, little guys, and I'll grab that head just like that. And when I grab that head, I'm gonna pull him out just ever so slightly, not too much, and then yank him out. And then once I get him out, and you wanna make sure that you put some alcohol on these guys or burn the tips a little bit with fire to get all that bacteria out of there before you use these. Very important. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that and then I'm going to pull them right out. And uh, usually it doesn't take much effort. Um, once I yank them out, I'm going to put alcohol over that. And then I also have a lubrication that I use after I pull them out. That's a um, anti, I'll, I'll take anti-inflammatory if I need to. Um, it's available. In this pack and then I'll also take that lubrication that's a um, say antibiotic I'll take that as well and that that helps a little bit but do stay alcohol in general or you can do soap and water as well that'll help so I'll take that and I'll, t I'll pull them out and then I want to start taking notice of symptoms that I might be having headaches or start getting a flu symptom right away that's that's you know not good if you start having that but um, usually you're not going to start getting those symptoms until a little later but um, I want to keep notice of what my body's telling me um, and then also if you start getting a red ring around it, that's not good either. So if you get the tick out, you want to keep them, put them in some alcohol. You don't have a liquid form of alcohol with you unless you like to booze it out with your buddies. Don't, if you don't have that, um, you can go ahead. I try to just wrap them in the little alcohol paper that I have. It's the best I can do and then I can send that over to the lab if I need to. You want to make sure you have clean hands if you can. Wash your hands with soap and water if you have the ability to do that. If you got gloves, use them. Um, do whatever you can to get your hands all cleaned up before you start going in. And then get your hands cleaned up after you're done. Um, it's important to take that case, that precaution, because we do in the Bay Area have quite a lot of tickage. Um, and you can get them all year. It's not like people are like, oh, you're only going to get them in the summer. That's not true. You can get them in the winter. I got them in the winter recently. You know, that's the other thing I kind of do is I'll brush stuff off, you know, I want to take a precaution, that's a good idea. Um, and I will do that in, in the winter, the summer, the spring, the fall, you're going to get them no matter what. Um, you could, you can get them, but like I said, there's so many precautions that you can take and be safe about it. And there's also, you know, a low chance of the infection, a low chance of that Lyme disease because our western fence lizard is right there to back us up. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, hit that bell for notifications. All you new subscribers, thank you. Current subscribers, thank you. It just means so much to us. We didn't even think we were going to get this big. Uh, it's so exciting. All right, guys. Have a good one. Take care.
in the eastern U.S. Nymphal Dick... <laughs> <See>. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 